Comfort in the knowing that whether if you've come to stay a while or just passing through, this door is open to you. Come and let's be silent. Come and share a hug. Come, let's pray together. Come, love and be loved. From the blessed out to the turned out, from the pampered to the abused, this door is open to you. Come on in. Christian, Buddhist, or Jew, this door, this door is, open is open to you. Good morning, you know. everyone here. I wanted to just introduce myself. My name is Rev. Claudia Renee, and it is an honor and privilege to be your senior minister here. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. Thank you. 
I want to thank everyone who came last Sunday and all of those who were in service to make it an absolutely amazing first Sunday for me and for us together. So I just want to give another round of applause for all of uh, those who really stepped up in an extraordinary way. I shared with a couple people, I've never been welcomed in such a way. And somebody said, really? And I said, I've always been welcomed in lovely ways, but you guys were over the top. It was an extraordinary Sunday. So I, I feel loved, I feel embraced, and I just want to say thank you. And I want to thank everybody who's here again today. Thank you for being here. Thank everybody who is joining us online. We're thrilled to have you. What I know is that there's no time, space, or distance between us that we get gather here together in oneness and in unity. And I often like to invite the people who are here to actually wave to the people who are there and say, hey, welcome. We're so glad that you joined us. Thank you. Thank you. And so what I like to say as part of my introduction is also this, and you'll hear me say this, this body has the name Claudia. But what I am is spirit, unlimited and free, just like you. And so we come as spiritual beings having a human experience in this world. And what I want to say also, by way of introduction at the get-go, is boy, aren't we having some human experiences in the world right now? And so part of my role as being minister is not only to speak the principles of truth, but to speak them to that which is happening in the world. It's because we have a relevant, practical approach to Christianity, to spirituality. And so what I want to remind us is that what we're doing here today, right here and right now, is vitally important. In fact, it is the most um, important form of activism that we can do because what we're doing together is we are at cause. And there's a lot of shadows going on, on in the world right now. And all those shadows are, are an outpicturing of our consciousness, right? They're not the cause. And all shadows are, my friends, is varying degrees of lack of light and love. And so when we come together to anchor light and to anchor love and to be that in the world, the darkness and the shadows must succumb to it. And so that's why it's so important that we're here together. So I'm grateful to be in a spiritual community that understands this and knows principles and practices them in our lives. So we take a breath together. I mentioned last week it's a, it's a dicey time to become a minister, a new minister in a community. And I'm, I'm careful what I call forth. What I call forth is that it's an extraordinary time to be in spiritual community and to be with you. And I'm so very grateful, so thank you. So with that, I want to say that unity is a positive, practical, progressive approach to Christianity and to spirituality. And it is based upon the teachings of Jesus, who we regard as our older brother, our brother, our way shower, the master teacher. And what he did that is unique is that he fully realized his divinity. And our spiritual practice here at Unity of Renaissance is for us to awaken to our divine identity as Jesus did and to become as Christ. We honor all pathways and names for God. And I want to add here, and this is a Reverend Claudia ad, is that we also, we also honor the divine feminine, the way of Mary, as well as the way of Jesus and that together it combines to help us to awaken in consciousness. So wherever you are on your spiritual path, you are absolutely welcome here. And what anchors us together is our vision and mission. So together I invite you to speak with me our vision, which is we are a spiritually awakened world living in peace, love, and joy and our mission. We transform lives that transform the world. And so it is. 
And so we move into prayer at this time. But before we do so, I want to say that today's a special day. Last week was special too, right? <laughs> this week's really special too. And what I want to say is that we get, we get to honor and celebrate uh, Reverend Richard McDesey, who has been the music director for, I said 12 years, 10 years, 10 years. And so part of our service is going to be dedicated to that. And it's also my honor and uh, privilege to, uh, to acknowledge that Reverend Paula McDesey is here to support us. Please stand. She's here to support us in our next uh, phase of, of our experience here and to honor and celebrate her husband. And I'm so very grateful. I had, the, uh, I had the privilege of spending some time with her this week and what an extraordinary being you are. And the week before, I, I, Reverend Elizabeth Thompson was on the stage and today you're here. And I feel that we are a community of love and of embrace and that we integrate all that we have done before, that we may move to our next bright and brilliant future together. So it, we're so happy you're here today. Thank you. And so we take a breath here for the opening prayer. I invite you to turn within, to allow the body eyes to close if that is comfortable for you. And as we breathe in and out, we breathe in and out the love and light of God. How grateful I am to remember in this holy instant that there's ever only one activity going on. It's the activity of God, called by many names, called by love, by source, by creator, by the all that is, by everything. But what I know it to be is love. It is a one power and one presence that created all that is in peace, in joy, in harmony, and in wholeness, meaning that there's nothing lacking. Oh my goodness gracious, how grateful I am to remember that that must mean that I am created in the image and after the likeness of God in light of in love and joy and beauty as is each individuation that is here. I am as God created me. Allow my words to become the words within your own soul, placing the hand before the heart and breathing in. I am as God created me. I am the light that shines away the shadows. I am the love that answers the cries for love. Unified in God, I am a power and that all power under heaven and earth move through me. When I am rightly aligned with source and creator, I am as God created me. And from this consciousness we unify from the, the multiplicity and the diversity, there is unity. And together we bless this time. It's good and very good. Something wonderful and magnificent is happening. We let it, we allow it, and we bless it. We bless all those who create this service, all the musicians, and everyone who is present, that there is a collective sacredness here and now. And from this place of gratitude, I release this word. It returns fulfilled. This is a joyful time as we celebrate together all that has been and all that will be. And it all fades into God, into love. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Now, as we begin to open the body eyes, I just invite you to shift in your seat just ever so slightly to take on 
the remembrance of who you are. And when you open the eyes, you might look at your brother or sister sitting next to you or the musicians as they sing and play. And do so with the light of God shining through your eyes, blessing all that you see. Thank you. All right. If you could join us on your feet for our next selection. Very simple, very catchy. Everything I need to be at peace about what lies before me. Everything that I need to be at peace about what lies before me is available to me. Is available to me through the mind of God within me. job, Unity. Wow. Amazing. The, the energy in here just keeps getting better and better and higher and higher. Yeah? <laughs> Yay, Unity Renaissance. So I'm Laurel Brooks. Very happy and honored to be your platform host for today. And our word for today is divine order. So please join me in our affirmation together. During times of uncertainty, I trust divine order. Okay, okay, together. During times of uncertainty, I trust divine order. That's better. Thank you. How often have I felt disappointed when something did not work out as I had planned or hoped for, only to discover a blessing I had not anticipated. Understanding that a seeming obstacle may actually be an unrecognized opportunity, I resist the temptation to wonder why the setback is happening. I may receive guidance to wait for a better time to pursue my plan, or perhaps an insight that will arise out of what appeared to be a failure, showing me a way forward that will accomplish an even greater good. Affirming divine order always keeps me patient 
and trusting in right outcomes in all situations. Our scripture verse is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. As always, if you would like prayer support today, we have several options. You may fill out a prayer request form at the table right outside the chapel, or you may submit a prayer request on our website, unityrenaissance.org, or you may call Silent Unity anytime, day or night at 816-969-2000. And for those of you who are here, you know what happens. Prayer chaplains, will you please stand? And our prayer chaplains will be available to meet you in the chapel after the service to pray for your celebrations and for your challenges. Thank you very much. And now, please rise and join us for the Lord's Psalm. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
gift of Christ in me sees the Christ in you. Everyone's a chosen one, the many and the few. All together now it takes two. The Christ in me and the Christ in me. do that again and can you all stand and sway to that That's beautiful. Boy, do you feel that? That just brings tears to my eyes, and it opens my heart, and it brings me such encouragement, so much so that I took my shoes off. (laughs) Sometimes the Prada's got to go. So if they had been Prada's, they had to go. So I hope you forgive me, but it feels so much better. (laughs) <laughs> Somebody caught me out there, the North, nor, what do we call it? North, and said, I thought you didn't preach with shoes on. She goes, you beat you, girl. And I'm like, okay, next week. So, <laughs> so how very grateful I am for the promise, which is our conversation today. 
the promise at a time when we could sure use one, when we could sure have a little bit of assurance of a faith, of things hoped for, because that's what a promise does. A promise says, you know, beloved, it's going to be okay. You know, beloved, you've been given a teaching that tells you to follow a certain pathway and that if and when you do, you become as Christ through which all things are possible. That's why that song was so resonant, because it was, it was touching something within, in us that knows the truth, that as Christ in Christ, and what does this mean, as Christ in Christ? It means as an individuation of spirit, as an extension of the all that is, of creator, of love, there's a spark of the divine within each of us that is the call that I spoke of last week that is tugging at the heart, whispering in the ear, and that is revealed through the way of the heart, not the way of the intellect, the way of the heart, because the way of the heart remembers who you are before you became a conditioned human being. The way of the heart can cut through that conditioning. Counterintuitive to the ways of the world, because we've tried the ways of the world. How's it working for you? Pull a little Dr. Phil there. How's it been working for us? Well, all you have to do is look at what's going on in the world. There's a lot of shadow going on in the world. And what is a shadow? other than varying degrees of the absence of light? What is a shadow other than fear? False evidence appearing real. What is a shadow other than what we might call the ego? Edging God out. What is a shadow other than having fallen asleep to the divine identity of each of us as Christ. And this community has said, we are committed to spiritual awakening, which implies we have been asleep. Wake up, beloveds. We've been walking asleep, and there is no safety in that. So the promise is the topic of today's conversation. And to me, the combination of the call from last week and the promise of this week is what our foundation for the bright and brilliant future that happens now is. That's our foundation. And so we answer a call of the heart. And in that call of the heart, we become clear on a pathway. Now, in the very beginning of our conversation and every Sunday, we talk about being a practical, positive, what is it? Positive, practical, progressive Christianity or approach to spirituality. We talk about that. And we talk about Jesus being our way shower. And, and here's the thing about Jesus and how we consider Jesus in unity. Jesus is our brother. I'll never forget being raised Catholic and walking into a Unity Church, Unity Church of Overland Park, Kansas, in the mid-90s. And that distinction for me was, was so important because as a young Catholic girl, and the way I interpreted the Catholic teaching as a young girl and a young woman, not to say that I don't honor that pathway to God, but what didn't make sense to me was that there was only one. And like, if, if God so loved Jesus and, and Jesus had to be the only way, well, what was the point? I was going to fail anyway. 
And I didn't really like what was being required. It, it seemed painful, it seemed punishing, it didn't seem loving at all to me. And so when I went to Unity Church and I was told, oh, no, no, Jesus is our brother and our way shower, is our master teacher. And he became so fully aware of his oneness with Abba, Papa, Father, Mother, God, that seamless oneness that the humanness gave way to the Christ. And he became the Christ. And that what was inherent in him was inherent in all of us. And I thought, I like that. That seems hopeful to me. That seems loving to me. And so I began my pathway there. And for me, Jesus has been my teacher and my way shower. And that as I progressed through my own practice, I became really intrigued with some channeled work. So channeled through a medium or through a voice that comes through that was attributed to Jesus. And one of those is called the way of mastery. Reverend Elizabeth Thompson mentioned it last week. It's something I've taught for a long time. And the very first page of the way of mastery, which is the teaching of Jesus, which is a, a new teaching of Jesus. And here's how I say to people. This is what I say to people. I'm like, if you're a Christ at being, and you're eternally a Christ at being, when you leave this experience, do you cease to be? If, if you are a master teacher, if your love is, is the awakening of humanity, does it matter that you're not in a body and form anymore? Wouldn't you keep practicing your craft? And isn't it pretty cool that that voice can still come through, that it's still alive, that it can still teach us? And all I can say to you is that it rings true for me, and so I'm going to share it with you because this is something that is important to me, and I'm your new minister, and I want you to know the things that move me and the promise moves me. And how I envision it is it's like Jesus as Christ is standing here, is among us, the Christ in you recognizes the Christ in me, right? And I'm imagining disciples, followers, who, who got, oh, I'm supposed to follow you, not worship you. Like, you're my teacher. So we're going to sit around a fire, a campfire, and there Jesus is, and he's like saying, hey, dudes, you're, you know, come on, wake up now already. It's been a while. <laughs> You've had this information. And so let me remind you what it is and why it's so important. And he says this, because don't you sometimes need to know what you're getting yourself into or be reminded of why? Because to transform our lives, which is also what this community has said it is about, requires change. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't like change that much. It's uncomfortable. I, got, I have my groove going down in Naples, Florida. <laughs> I'm trying to get my groove back here, right? It's a, it's, it's a different, it's different. I'm, I'm waking up way earlier for sunrises. I mean, I was going after sunsets down there. It, it was like a completely different atmosphere. But what's the same is love. What's the same is that I'm loved and supported. The, the beach is down there. We're a little bit different than the one here, you know? And yet when I was down there, I remember walking that beach, 
talking to the golf. And it's saying to me, that's okay, I'll be there with you, honey. I'm just going to be way over here in the Atlantic. And we'll have a relationship still. You're going to wake up for sunrises. Here it was, you know, you get what I'm saying. Down there it was palm trees. Here it's grasses. And yet all of life is connected and supporting us. If we soften our eyes and allow, allow, allow the changes to happen and become unattached to the circumstances and conditions and to look for love everywhere, even when everything changes. And so it's nice to have a promise that's going to tell you what things are going to look like because sometimes in the midst of the change, you're gnashing your teeth and crying. Why is it different? Why is it hard? And the promise carries you on. It tells you what you can expect. And so the promise goes something like this. Remember, Jesus is kind of sharing this with us. I promise you this. If you become wholly committed, wholly committed to awakening from the dream that you've dreamt since the beginning of time, and if your one and only desire is to be as God created you to be, then place upon the altar of your heart everything, everything you think you know, everything you think you need in all of the places look upon lovingly all the places where fear has made a home in your mind place all that on the altar and correction will come allow it just allow it and there will be a time when you could not comprehend that you were asleep in a dream. And it will be as if the wind has brushed aside the foam upon the wave and that you can see with clarity the depth beneath you. And you will feel peace from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes. Wiggle your toes. You will feel peace. And guess what? That peace will go before you. And you'll enter a room. Huh. You're going to enter a room, and people aren't going to know exactly what happened when you entered the room. But they will know that they are entertaining a Christ among them and that that Christ has come for dinner and that one will be you. Tap the heart or the shoulder. That one will be me. Christ eternal. Peace from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet and it goes before me heralding my way. Take a breath here. That's the promise. How many want to be at peace? Sometimes when I ask in my visioning what God's highest vision is for me, beneath all of the, the various uh, things in the outer world that I might desire, below all of that, below you know, deeper, 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 it's always peace. I always just want to feel at peace. And so that's the promise. And I talked last week about the call, and I thought I would share with you a call that I had and how this plays out in it, how this prayer which you will get a copy of as you leave here today, has become such a part of my life that I'm always speaking it. I'm always unpacking it. 
So the call that I had was back in um, 2003. I was at Unity Church of Overland Park, Kansas. And I was listening to Michael Beckwith on cassette tapes. And I had a group of people, and we would listen together. And my minister had moved on. And I had heard about this thing about being a prayer practitioner, a spiritual practitioner. And I thought, gosh, I want to do that. Because I'm not really happy doing what I'm doing in life. It doesn't feel meaningful. Ever trying to search for the meaning in your life? Feeling like you're doing what's expected in the world, but you're not quite fulfilled. Like you kind of have this nagging feeling you're supposed to be doing something else. Ever feel that way? So that's where I was. So I go on a retreat out in California, at Monterey Bay State Park, and I'm doing a visioning process. And in that visioning, I get, Eureka, I'm supposed to move to California study with Michael Beckwith and become a religious science practitioner. And classes start the following month. So I'm in Kansas City. I'm sitting on the beach praying for a sign, like, OK, God, if you really want me to do this, OK, this is the vision I think I've got. If you really want me to do this, I want to see, um, I want to see a a fish that blows water up into the air. And I'm meditating, and I'm looking, and I'm like looking for that sign. And I, I see it, I think. And so <laughs> I'm like, there it is. You see, you'll see the signs that you think you're looking for. <laughs> We're very powerful that way. So I saw it. And I thought, OK, this is going to happen. And I went for a walk on the beach. And do you know who I met on the beach? I met the dean of the school. And I told her what I wanted to do. I said, I, I want to be there, and I want to start next month, and I've got all the prerequisites. I'm ready to go. And she looked at me, and she said, well, I think you should just move out here and live in the community for a year, because we're a very spiritually advanced community. And I thought, what? Does she not know Unity Church of Overland Park, Kansas? We're spiritually advanced. <laughs> so I told her that. I said, no, I'm coming there for a reason. I'm called there for this reason. And she just looks at me, and she says, well, when you get home, send me your information. So I go home, and I'm going. I just know I'm going. I do a for sale by owner on the front lawn, and then I put on my most um, ministerial, like, flowing clothes I could find, and a huge crystal. Because <laughs> I'm spiritual now. And so, and I walk into my employer, and usually I'm very tailored in a suit, and they look at me, and I say, I quit. I'm going to Los Angeles, California, and I'm going to be a religious science practitioner, a spiritual counselor. And they just look at me like, is she crazy? And oh, by the way, classes start next month. And so I go home, and then I get a call from them, and they're like, we think you're crazy. We don't think you know what you're doing. So here's what we're going to do for you. We're going to fly you back and forth for your first term on us. And if you really think this is what you want to do, we support you. But we don't want you to quit your job. So every Thursday, I'd hop on a plane. Class was Thursday night at 7. Hop on a plane. I'd go to class. I had a friend there who would pick me up, drive me back to LAX for the red eye back home because I was working still. So when people tell me they can't get to class, I'm like, <laughs> no. 
No. <laughs> you can get there. I know. So I end up going. The point of the story is, is that that person who I was in that moment had a certainty of her call. I was willing to wholly commit to that call. I was willing to change my entire life to answer that call. And I was willing to be humble that even though I was all that, I had a lot to learn. Eric Butterworth says that people who come to our teaching, we suffer from one thing and one thing only that blocks us. And it's called I know it already itis. <laughs> I know it already itis, because we're pretty smart, aren't we? And so the invitation, which we'll get into next week, is really to become humble and to become willing and to be 100% committed to our spiritual awakening, our growth, our development, and our unfoldment. Now, because Lisa helped me with some slides, I just want to go through the promise one more time with my story in mind. And it begins with this. If you become wholly committed, not just a little committed, but wholly, all in committed to your spiritual growth, development, and unfoldment. That's what we're asking for here, to awakening, which is what this community has already committed itself to. So if we become wholly committed, and if our one desire is to only be as God created us to be. That's it. That's the one desire. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't express in different ways. Or that we'll be called in different ways. And for most of us, what I want to say is that your calling doesn't require you to go anywhere or to be and do anything other than what you already are, which is a beloved being that God created. So it becomes willing to allow the identity you made up for yourself to give way to this divine identity as God created us. Then lay at the altar of your heart take a breath here. I always think of the altar of the heart as the center place, this intersection of a horizontal axis of humanity with a past that we might regret and a future that we might worry about. But if we can go center to the heart, to that altar, it's the consciousness of into thine hands I commend my spirit. Whew. And I can go vertical. I place everything upon that altar. And what do I cherish most? Everything I think, my thinking mind, everything I think I need. I think I need a whole lot of things, but the Camino really taught me I need very little. In every place where fear is made a place in my heart, I just place it upon that altar. And then allow. Doesn't that feel so much better? Because correction will come. You don't have to do anything else. Let your shoulders drop. You really don't have to take another class, but I'm going to ask you to. <laughs> you really don't have 
to wring your hands or beg or beseech. You just be willing to surrender it all and place it on the altar of the heart. And the pain and the fear and the suffering drop away and clarity is revealed. And in your heart, you'll smile regardless of circumstances, regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of the news, and peace will prevail in your life. This is the promise. Christ has entered the room, and it is you. And I behold each of you in that light. And so we just take a breath here. And I just invite each of us to turn with him for a moment to take a breath. Hmm. And with each breath, I just allow myself to relax. I release all tension. Let the shoulders drop. The thinking mind becomes still. I abide in perfect safety here. And I allow my mind to dissolve in the perfect peace of God. And as I breathe in, I breathe in the love of God. I breathe in and out the love of God. This is my home. This is my habitation. This is my divine identity. I walk not alone. And how grateful I am. I have anchored peace in this way, in this moment. And it washes over me, extends from me, and blesses. Blesses all. And so it is. Amen. 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 Claudia, that was heart moving. It was beautiful. Thank you. We have a lot to be grateful for, don't we? Yeah, we do. And it's that time in our service when we 
get in touch with that gratitude and think about this building, this community, the staff, the music team, all of the ministries that we have here. And it's time to support that. And we have so many different ways to do that. There is a basket in the back of the room that you can put your cash, check, money order. I wouldn't put your credit card there. <laughs> um, you can also go to our website, which is unityrenaissance.org. Um, tithely, sign up for that. It, and when, you're do, when you do the online um, option, it really is tied to Tithely. And there's also the option to do it by text. And you just text the word give, followed by the amount, to this number. And so now take your gift in your hand or in your heart. And let's take care of our beautiful offertory blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have and all that I give and all that I receive. And I am grateful. shortly after so I just want to let you know how much I truly appreciate you uh -huh. you have helped me improve my piano skills I have posy songs that are forever in my head now including yours and just overall I'm gonna miss on Sundays you coming into boarding team or singing a <laughs> random song that were one of the songs that we're gonna sing on Sunday so I'm definitely gonna miss your your energy here and I just truly appreciate you <laughs>
Lily Scott, everybody. Oops. Oh, boy, following that. <laughs> So um, this is a time to welcome any of you who are here for your first time at Unity Renaissance. If this is your first time, please raise your hand because we have a gift for you and we would like to give it to you. So keep mm -hmm. your hand up. Any hands? Oh, here we go. <laughs> we have one over here. Anyone else? Don't want to miss anyone. Uh, we, uh, the gift inside, and also there's a, a card that you can fill out and take it to our bookstore, and there's another gift for you. And we hope that you will come back this next week and, and whenever you can. We would love to have you again. We welcome you to uh, our lovely community. And am I on? You're on. Okay. <laughs> this is the time of year that we get to work with our brothers and sisters that are experiencing homeless right now, homelessness. And through the JCOC, on a week, two weeks from tomorrow, which would be Monday the 29th, we have several opportunities for you to take part. We have the prep team that meets here at Unity Renaissance at 1.30 on Monday the 29th. And then at 4 o'clock, we have the delivery team that will, that will carry the packaged lunches to Mount Olivet Church. And there are several other options that you can get involved. You can purchase food. You can make food. You can be creative. And all of this is outlined on our website, unityrenaissance.org, under events. And there is a sign up genius, and you can just sign up right there, and it tells you exactly what to do. If you have questions, Lynn Klein, are you here today? Would you wave and stay? <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Lynn. Please speak to Lynn after the service from now until then, and or call her. Your number is your number on the website, Lynn. Okay. Anyway. Um, you can always call Unity Renaissance if you have a question, and, and they will get you in touch with them. Thank you. And now we have a spotlight with Sandy Steffen. Come on up. Oh, hello, Unity Renaissance, <laughs> and everyone online as well. Once again, I have the privilege and the honor to share one of um, art with all of you. Obviously, we have a pretty unique venue, and our current artist uh, for July and August is Miss or Sandy Lee Snyder. If you could please welcome Sandy Lee Snyder. <laughs> the show is July and August. The title of the show is Photo Art by Sandy Lee. Obviously, she was. Her education is a graphic design background. She's currently with the Virginia Beach Art Center on their board and also an exhibitor at the Artist Gallery that's in that same building. Uh, so this is our 36th show and our 36th artist. Wow. So please explore, enjoy. She'll be, at, she'll be here afterwards to uh, chat with you. You can get the information, purchase, um, and Anyway, enjoy the show. And now I'd like to invite up our board president, Christopher Naughton. A few of us would like to say a few words to that guy. But before we do, let's roll the video. Everybody get up on
Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. For all the kingdom, power and praise with you began and with you stays. Reverend Richard, yes, sir. 11 years ago, when you and Paula came here, we didn't realize that you were the secret sauce. <laughs> you are a pioneer, sir. You are a great creative talent. You're an extraordinary songwriter, singer. We have been blessed by your immense talent. And let me just say this, as New Thought expands in this world, as most certainly it will, your music your posse music is going to grow with that, and decades from now, we'll be singing Richard McDees. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Richard, we'd, we'd like you to come over here. First of all, I want you to know what a bright, bright light you are in this community. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like to present you with a gift and just appreciate you for all of the things that you've done for this community and for the sweet spirit that you are. Thanks. Love you very, very much. Too. Nick? And he's not going anywhere either. We have. <laughs> Nick, I believe you're next. Come on up. My dear brother Richard. I just want to say in front of everyone that I am so grateful for you. Um, I cannot imagine what my life would be like if I did not meet you at that hotel to perform my funny Valentine <laughs> seven years ago. Yeah, and I've been here ever since and this place has completely changed my life and I have you to thank for that. Um, Filling your shoes is going to be tough. I won't lie about it, but you have always championed me, and for that I'm thankful and grateful to you. Um, this music team would not be what it is if it was not for you. You are a light. You are so a great positive leader, truly. I don't think there's one Sunday that we can come in here and not believe that it can get done because of how you usher us through. And so I wanna say thank you for your service because I know that this is not easy. <laughs> so thank you for what you do and what you bring to us and for the time that everyone does not know goes into what it is that we do because I know that it's a lot. And so I wanna say thank you and we honor you and we see you and personally, I'm just so grateful that you came into my life. So thank you. We also have some flowers for you as well. Richard, Richard. I got but wait, more. there's more. There's more. There's a line. There is a line. Yeah, so just get, hang in here. This is nice. So I actually, there's a trick. <laughs> nope, there's no square plug. It lights up. And, and what it does is, 
You get the tree, and it illuminates your way forward, and it affirms prosperity in your future endeavors, right? A tree that grows. But on a personal note, you had just become a reverend when I showed up here. I don't know what year that was. It was like five years ago. And I knew you were the person, you were the person who confirmed that I was in the right church. I love you, Reverend. And a card from the staff, of course. Feels like my birthday. Thank you so much. Why? Well, who's next? I must have a full. I must got a full house. I think I, I have one. Yeah. And so um, I just want to say that one of the things that I've noticed since I've been here is that love surrounds you. That you, yeah. Love surrounds you, which means that you're loved, that you are so loved by everybody here, that I'm so very great. I was a little bummed when, um, <laughs> but I understood, and I wanted to say thank you for um, staying on as long as you have. I really appreciate it. I also um, want to say that the love that I've seen around you, I'm thinking of the class the other night. Everyone assisted Alicia, Reverend Ann, everybody, Charlie, everybody was around. And I just saw such a demonstration of love and everybody just regards you with that. So thank you. Thank you and I'm glad you're going to be sticking around. So. I am. I'll be here. <laughs> but I also want to say it just feels right to have the whole community stand. And I'm wondering if you would stand here if you feel comfortable. Paula doing that and maybe leading us in blessing your husband um, with a unity blessing. Yes. Are you okay with that? Here, have a microphone. Thank you. Oh, it's just amazing to see you all again. I've missed you so much. <laughs> You already know he's amazing as a music director. Mm -hmm. He's amazing as a human being. And Richard, just take a moment to turn within and really feel that connection with you and see that beautiful light in you that is you, that has blessed each and every one of us so mightily. All the ways you give love you aren't even aware of. And so we just feel that love in our hearts right now. We turn it all right back to you, knowing big, bright, beautiful things are ahead for you that you will find the right and perfect ways to continue to bless this community and all of unity and everyone who knows you. So from the deepest parts of our hearts, we say thank you, thank you, dear Richard. And in our Christ salute, we say together, we love you. We love you. We bless you. We bless you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. you. And we behold the Christ, the Christ in, in you. you. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Okay, get back to work. <laughs> it's time to welcome our children. <laughs> Three, two, three, four. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of God. We Walking in the light of light of God, we are walking, walking, we are walking, walking, we are walking in the light of light of God, we are walking, walking, we are walking, walking, we are walking in the light of God, we are walking in the light of God, we are walking in the light of God. Okay. Well, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so nice to see all of you. Such beautiful faces. 
oh, it's so, such a beautiful, beautiful morning. The sun is held up for us, right? So we don't get wet coming in out of church. What a grateful, wonderful thing. Let's start with prayer. Where is my offertory angel? Right next to me. Thank you, sweet Sophia. Okay, everyone take a deep breath. Mm, sweet spirit, thank you so much for all that you have given us today, that we have risen, that we could see the sunshine and breathe the fresh air, for our children's smiles, and even for the grumpy faces that we know are happy, for our volunteers, for all that they have given us today in their creativity, in their thoughts, in their hearts, for these monetary gifts, for all things big and small, we say thank you so much, and so it is, amen. Okay, so we do have something special planned, so I'm going to give it to Miss B for one moment. Sweet Miss B. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't know. Good morning, Unity Renaissance. Good morning. I don't know if you're aware of it, but we are now exploring our ability power of understanding. Let me just share a little bit of nugget of gold with that. Understanding is the power to comprehend and interpret knowledge, make cognitive connections. And when you think about it, that's what we're all doing right here at Unity Renaissance. And for those of you who don't know, it's located right in the front of the brain. The color is gold. 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 And on that note, I want to give that back to Mary. <laughs> I had to share, our, our, I don't know if you can tell, I get very excited about the power. And the most importantly, we're going to even skip on sharing today because we have a special, special goodbye for a special, special friend that we have planned. And we cannot wait one more minute. Reverend Richard, you are our special, dear, sweet, sweet friend. And you have been so much more to us than you have ever known, not only musically, but with your words of wisdom, with your heart, and with all that you are. So, in YFM fashion, everybody hold your breath. We have a special, special song just for you, sir. Yes. He said, who's going to play it? We. Ah, that's my brother's cell phone. I cheated. Because we couldn't, let, we couldn't let the music man know we were playing music. If all of you are aware of this, our Reverend Richard McDesey wrote that song over 20 years ago. And our children of YFM, Mary, actually taught, and our awesome teachers, all of our children on this very day. So thank you so much. Richard, we have been down many, many roads. 
The Shining Souls are part of the youth family ministry. It's a youth choir, and you've received text messages in the middle of the night, song changes an hour before. Lots of emojis. <laughs> lots, lots of emojis. So we thank you, and on behalf of Shining Souls, we thank you and we release you. Thank you. Just giving him a moment. Please stand for the prayer of protection of the peace song. <laughs> Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us in the presence. 